What's up everybody? Welcome back to the FNG Academy. Je m'appelle Sean. Je suis un sergent dans l'armée américaine. And today we're going to talk about language school. Oh, and I'm also here to help you guys get selected. Alright guys, in this video we're going to talk about language school. Before we do that, this video is sponsored by 18 Alpha Fitness. Kevin is prior special forces. Obviously he was an 18 Alpha, he was an officer, but he was also enlisted as Special Forces and he currently puts together a killer program for guys getting ready for any type of selection. So go check him out. All right guys, so thanks for coming. I hope you guys like Rising Above. Do me a favor, jump over to Instagram. I'm gonna post the uh, knife and book giveaway probably by today. No later than this weekend, I'll post the deadline and the rules. Leave your Amazon reviews for the book. Jump over to Insta hit done on the uh, picture when it comes up and winner will be selected within a week for the signed book and the knife. Let's get a thousand likes on this video and thank you guys for subscribing. All right, so let's talk about language school. There have been some changes. I think you even get your berets now before language school um, because language school has always been kind of like the check off the block thing. I had French for my language. And as far as picking your language, you get, just like your MOS, you get to put in your top choices and you may get them, you may not. So it's just kind of based on the needs of special operations, where they need holes filled as far as languages and then where they need holes filled as far as uh, groups and who needs what. And a lot of you guys have asked, does your group depend on your language? Yes and no. So obviously if you get uh, French, you're more likely to go to, at the time was 10th group or third group, um, depending on where those groups are deploying to, right? It makes sense. You want to fill that group uh, with places they're deploying to with their languages so they can actually use those languages. But that doesn't guarantee if you get French that, okay, now you're definitely going to third or you're definitely going to 10th. Or if you get Russian, you're definitely going to first group. But it helps. So yes, if you have a group in mind that you want to get to, I would find out the language that mostly goes to that group because there are always like onesies and twosies. Even if it doesn't make sense, that group may need X amount of this MOS. And so therefore, even though your language isn't like majority of that group, you could still go to that group anyway to fill the slot. You got to do the best you can. One of the ways to get to the group that you want is to try and pick the language that predominantly goes there. Other than that, um, I thought language school was going to be chill after all the testing and SUT and SEER school. I thought this is going to be our time to relax and just enjoy the fact that we're almost done. Robin Sage was done. I mean, we'd done all the hard stuff. And for some, I'm sure it was. I was fucking miserable in language school. I hated it. Uh, I have ADHD like real bad. So sitting in a classroom for eight hours a day saying shit like, Je m'appelle Sean. What did you do this weekend? Like, fuck me, dude. It was, <laughs> it was brutal. And my teacher, she was um, from Africa. So she had a different dialect of French. It made it extremely hard to, to pick up as you're learning French. And it was just a hard experience. Uh, she was a very unique uh, personality. I remember one time the, one of the officers in my class farted and she smelt it and went to the bathroom. There's a bathroom connected to the room. She went to the bathroom and started throwing up in the bathroom over a fart. And she came back in and she was yelling at us. And she's like, you guys are disgusting. In my country, you never fart in front of women. And we're just like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but other than that, it's just eight hours a day of classwork. You're learning uh, past tense, future tense. Um, and then, you know, trying to tie it all together and then you get tested out on a phone interview uh, where you need to score a one plus one plus having a conversation with uh, the interviewer. Um, so obviously that's kind of stressful and your pay could increase if you get a two or higher, which is pretty, pretty fluent. Um, that being said, if you already speak that language, if you already speak a language like Russian or whatever French, you're fluent in French or you're fluent in Spanish, you could potentially get that language if you put that at the top of your list. And yes, you can test out. My buddy Golan tested out of Russian, so he graduated way ahead of us and didn't have to do language school. So if you already speak one of their, uh, especially one of the more difficult languages, the good chance they'll give you that language and then you could skip language school altogether, which would be awesome because that school fucking sucks. But maybe you like language school. My only recommendation is that you pick something that you're at least somewhat interested in learning. 
Um, I wish I would have picked Spanish, but my wife didn't want to go to Florida. But at least my wife speaks Spanish, so at least it would have helped and we could have used it. Um, and then I would have been more excited to learn it and maybe had an easier time. I mean, French was cool, but I never got an opportunity to use it. So now nearly all my French is gone. Once you get to group, you will have to retest on your languages. So you don't just get to graduate and then throw it all out the window. Um, every year you'll have like three weeks of language refresher at your groups. Um, and then you'll do your phone call conversation again and test out every year. Uh, so you do have to have some upkeep. But as far as language goes, a lot of the questions I get is, can you test out? The answer is yes. Does your language send you to the group that you want? It can, not guaranteed, but I would, I wanted to go to 10th group, so I put in for French. So it is a good idea. Word of advice, don't pick the hardest language just in hopes that you want to get there. Cause you know, I've met guys that picked Russian and had a hell of a time because obviously uh, something like French or Spanish is going to be a lot easier to learn than Russian or Korean. Um, so be careful with that. Yeah, that was my experience with it. It's like six months. I think it was, I think it was like four to six months or something like that of just eight hours a day of language school grinding and then homework and then tests. Um, it's not fun if you have ADHD, but if you're good in a classroom environment, it's going to be super chill. Cadre doesn't fuck with you. It's just your time to get it done learn your language, test out, and then move on to your groups because you're almost there. It's the final step. Warning, there is a game that SF guys like to play at break. Don't get caught not knowing what it is like me and paying the price. They'll take a uh, volleyball and stand in a group of dudes and you volley by kicking it up like a hacky sack just with your feet. The third person that kicks it up gets to boot it as hard as they can at somebody else. I didn't know this game, I didn't know the rules, so I came in with my hands in my pockets, standing in the circle watching them play, and before I know it, I had a ball doing Mach 20 at my face and hit me right in the nose. Doof. I looked at the guy who kicked it and I thought about all the ways of ripping his fucking head off. But before I could, he started apologizing and at the end of the day, it was my fault for not knowing the rules. But now you guys know, so don't get kicked in the face by the ball. See you guys next time. And I can't see. Really, but it's obvious I know